Hi there, I'm Jake Pugh, an actor in training at the London College of Music. Today, I'll be talking to you about heightened verse alongside how an actor would prepare verse for performance. This presentation will address the form referred to as blank verse. Here are some key features of this form. Exercise 1. Discovering the words exercise, classical voice by Catherine Wheat. This exercise is useful for discovering your take on the meaning behind the words you are speaking about. Understanding the meaning behind these words and having such settled in the body is imperative for good acting, particularly when regarding verse. This exercise starts by finding a favourite word and proceeding to physicalise it. Then you take that and apply it to your text. From beginning to end, word by word, you move through your text, physicalizing. This will also help with memorizing the script. Here is an example. You are three men of sin, whom destiny that hath to instrument this lower world and what is in the never surfacing sea hath caused to Belch up, you! Exercise 2. Walking the Sentences, Barbara Hausman, Tackling Text. This exercise is vital in learning the structure of the verse you're working with and getting it into the body. It's a very important foundation upon which much of your other work will build upon. In learning the structure of the verse, you can also track the thoughts within it. Perform the exercise by doing your speech, turning on every line end, and stopping then turning when you find the end of a line has a full stop. Once done, do the exercise again, but be aware of where the sentence and line stop together, where it flows over, and where the last word is given additional emphasis. This exercise requires repetition and practice outside of the rehearsal room to be effective. As Barbara states, you do have to practice this exercise a great deal to get the shape embedded. If you only do the exercise once, this won't happen. You are three men of sin, whom destiny that hath to instrument this lower world, and what is in the never surfeiting sea hath caused to belch up you, and on this island where man doth not inhabit, you amongst men being most unfit to live, I have made you mad. And even with such like valour, men hang and drown their proper selves. You fools, I and my fellows are ministers of fate, the elements of whom your swords are tempered may as well wound the loud winds, or with the marked out stabs, kill the still closing waters as diminish one down that's in my plume. Exercise 3, Twin Chairs Exercise, or Changing Chairs, by Cicely Berry, adapted by Barbara Hausman in Tackling Text. This is an alternative to the previous exercise. You may find it helps you more. This exercise is most beneficial at the start of your process and then carried throughout. In order to perform the exercise, you must get two chairs, sit in one with your text, find a point or object to direct it to, imagining you are delivering your text to someone. You then perform your text, changing chairs on every punctuation you only speak when you are seated. You are three men of sin, whom destiny that hath to instrument this lower world and what is in it, the never surfeiting sea hath cause to belch up you. And upon this island where man doth not inhabit, you amongst men, being most unfit to live, I have made you mad. You continue this for the rest of the soliloquy. This exercise helps with rhythm, structure and breath. It also benefits you if you have a tendency to rush text. If you get the exercise into your body, you'll be ready so that, as Barbara Hausman states, once you go into rehearsal and performance, you can let the rhythms take care of themselves. Exercise 4. Clicking the final word by Barbara Hausman in Tackling Text. This exercise builds upon the previous two. 
It helps with ascertaining how each end word is emphasized and thus aiding in the sense of the verse for both actor and audience. A greater understanding of the implications of each stress will benefit your performance. This exercise, much like the other two, requires regular practice to be effective. Recite your speech once more, paying close attention to the final stressed word on each line. Barbara states on page 99 of her book, by highlighting them, you were better able to shape each sentence and therefore to find and communicate its meaning more effectively. You are three men of sin, whom destiny, that hath to instrument this lower world, and what is in the never surfeited sea, hath caused to belch up you, and on this island, where man doth not inhabit, you mongst men, being most unfit to live, I have made you mad. Exercise 5 Marking the Sizura by Barbara Hausman in Tackling Text. Once the other exercises have been completed, this is the next layer to put on. Sizura are small breaks in the line that divides it into two parts. The break usually comes after the second or third iambic pair, or didum didum didum. It's not always equally strong in all lines, and in others it might almost be completely removed but it is no less important to explore those breaks to find greater meaning and connection with the text. When doing the exercise, mark where you think possible sizura are in your speech. Set your speech up nearby and begin reciting. With each first half of a line, raise one hand palm up. When you reach the second, post sizura, raise the other. Drop the hands at the end of the line and repeat. You are three men of sin. Whom destiny, that hath to instrument this lower world, and what is in the never surfeiting sea, hath caused to belch up you, and upon this island, where man doth not inhabit, you mongst men, being most unfit to live, I have made you mad, and even with such like valour, Men still hang and drown their proper selves. As Barbara Hausman states on page 99 of Tackling Text, as you do the exercise, it will become clear to you where the break in the line is helpful and where it is better if the line flows on. In conclusion, I hope these various exercises help you progress in your own understanding and study of heightened verse and help you reach the heights you want to in your own performances. Thank you for listening. Good luck.